As the state reflects on that tragic day, we also think of the more than 16,000 lives that have been lost to the coronavirus. Today, Governor Murphy reported another 518 positive tests. The statewide cumulative total is close to 196,000, with nine new fatalities confirmed. This week, some of those new cases are stemming from students and staff as the school year gets underway. A number of districts, including Little Silver, Chatham, and the Middlesex County Votech, have canceled in-person classes. The Elizabeth Public School System and Summit are reporting positive tests in their schools. Colleges facing the same battle. The Murphy administration says they're closely monitoring the situation. According to the Department of Health, New Jersey's population of 19 to 24 year olds now has the highest percent positivity in the state with high school age kids right behind them. So is sending our kids into schools a good idea? Montclair State University professor and epidemiologist Stephanie Silvera explains. Stephanie, you and I have spoken about the fact that we didn't see a lot of cases in this age group, college, uh, younger students early on, simply because there wasn't a lot of testing, a number of reasons, but also because schools were closed. Uh, they are open now. We are seeing positive cases. Is this only going to grow from here? What do you anticipate? So I do anticipate we'll probably see a slight increase in cases um, among children, particularly, you know, we have to separate out those who are under 18, so our K-12 students versus our college age students, um, because the risk of showing symptoms is a little bit different in those groups. What we know so far um, around children is that about 7% of all COVID cases are seen in people under 18. But what's really interesting is about 90% of of childhood cases don't show symptoms or are only mildly symptomatic. And I think that's where it gets very difficult because those children can potentially be spreading the virus. We know children can spread even if they spread it at a lower rate. But if they're not symptomatic or mildly symptomatic, they might still be going into school, which allows them to potentially spread. How quickly does it spread, even with these mitigation efforts in place? I mean, at Montclair, uh, students were welcomed back. There are masks, social distancing, ventilation, of course. But how tough is it still to prevent the spread, and how quickly does it happen? So, you know, I think in terms of how easy will it be spread or how quickly, it's really going to depend a lot now on how well people comply with all of the mitigating factors that we've put into place. So. How likely are we to keep our masks on throughout a school day? I know a lot of school districts in K-12 are doing half days for that reason, or they're not doing lunch on site to try to lower the probability that people will have their masks off throughout the day. But anytime you take a mask off, if you're positive, you're potentially spreading that virus to other people who are susceptible. I think in the college setting, in residential colleges, the risk profile is gonna be very different because you have people living together in a community. And we have young people who are more likely to engage in risk-taking behaviors and might be less likely to comply. So there's slightly different um, risk profiles for those groups, but I would suspect that if we're gonna start seeing an increase in cases, we're gonna start seeing them more and more as the weather cools and people in general move indoors, which we know is a higher risk activity in general. I mean, a lot of this also we're seeing it coincides. We've got indoor dining now reopening, um, reopened indoor amusements. Interesting to you, all of this happening at the same time. And what are you looking out for given that? Yeah, I think having gyms and amusements and dining all open roughly around the same week that K to 12 schools and colleges open start to make it challenging to figure out what caused an increase in the number of cases. Should we see that? Um, I personally would have liked to have seen those rolled out on separate weeks so we can see where we might need to pull back and how we can attribute any increase in number of cases. Um, I think what we are going to be looking for are how many new cases are they? Um, again, the age groups. But one of the continuing um, challenges is that children are less likely just to go for testing. Um, in part because they're less likely to show symptoms. So even when we say 7% of cases are amongst children, that's really just a, a reasonable estimate at this point because children aren't tested at the same rate as adults are. Stephanie Silvera, thanks for your insight as always. Thank you for having me.